In 2026, when discussing electric car charging, the tone of the conversation changes completely. It's no longer about waiting half an hour at a supercharger or planning your trip around charging. The promise now is almost absurd to fully charge the battery in less than 10 minutes, something that until recently seemed like laboratory talk far removed from reality. It is in this scenario that aluminum ion batteries enter the scene, attracting attention not only for their extreme speed, but for the impact this can have on the entire electric vehicle market, especially on more affordable models like the Tesla Model 2 expected for this new industry cycle. The idea of charging an electric car as fast as refueling a combustion engine car sounds almost like magic. These batteries operate at charging rates between 4C and 6C, which in simpler terms means pushing energy into the pack at a brutal speed. In practical terms, a power pack that previously required long minutes plugged in could now be ready before you even finish a coffee. The problem is that when electrons travel too fast, they leave an inevitable trail. Heat and much more than traditional lithium ion batteries are used to handling. To get a clear idea of this difference, just compare real numbers. A lithium ion battery with around 55 feeder 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 even under a heavy superload of 250 kilowattiruf, usually increases its temperature by something between 8 and 10 degrees Celsius. An aluminum ion battery with a similar capacity can easily jump 15 to 20 degrees in the same time interval if there is no efficient thermal control. This is not just a minor technical detail, it's a game changer when considering durability, safety, and reliability in daily use. The challenge becomes even more interesting when you look at the size of the battery pack planned for the Model 2. To keep costs down and the car truly affordable, everything indicates that the capacity will be between 48 and 55 or 5 radio In simple terms, it's a smaller pack with less thermal mass to absorb that energy shock. It's like trying to heat a cup of water with a powerful hairdryer the temperature rises much faster than in a full bathtub. This analogy helps to understand why heat becomes such a sensitive problem in this type of architecture. Another point that often goes unnoticed is that this heating doesn't happen evenly. Inside the pack, the cells are stacked extremely compactly, and during ultra-fast charging, the heat concentrates mainly in the central regions of the modules. While the outer cells may seem comfortable, staying below 42 degrees Celsius, the core of the pack can exceed 50 degrees Celsius in a matter of minutes. This type of thermal spike accelerates chemical degradation and drastically reduces the battery's lifespan if not handled with extreme care. In 2026, this becomes even more significant because it's not a niche or luxury car, but a vehicle designed for everyday use a model that will face heavy traffic, intense summer heat, and quick recharges done without much ceremony in the middle of the day. In hot cities, the battery pack starts charging above 30 degrees Celsius even before the first kilowatt is delivered. Add to that an aggressive charging rate, like starting a race already out of breath, something that demands very well thought out solutions. In the case of the Tesla Model 2, thermal risk isn't just a technical concern, it's almost a silent villain that could compromise everything the project promises. With a smaller battery, like the 48B Taidu Poriud Aroatwari Fight to 55 TV Watt Ones, the heat generated during ultra fast charging has nowhere to escape. And unlike larger vehicles, which distribute this energy over more mass, the Model 2 ends up acting as an extreme testing ground for the new generation of aluminum ion batteries. And believe me, in this scenario, every degree counts. This risk is not limited to the heating of the pack as a whole, but also to how the heat is distributed within it. Because the cells are densely packed, the center of the module suffers much more. In just the first two minutes of intense charging, these central cells can cross the dangerous 50 degree C barrier, a zone where chemical processes begin to accelerate and consequently, degradation occurs more aggressively. If this heating is not carefully monitored and controlled, the result can be a battery with a much shorter lifespan than expected. 
And here's a detail that few people mention, but that changes everything. It's not just the heat generated that's a concern, it's the starting point. Imagine parking your car in Phoenix in the summer. The ambient temperature can already be 38 twerks, seeks, when the owner plugs the vehicle in for a quick charge. In this situation, the batteries don't even have a chance to start cold. This further accelerates the risk of overheating and makes thermal management a survival requirement, not just a technical advantage. On the other hand, when looking at cold regions, the problem is the opposite and equally dangerous. In climates of Tendic C, aluminum ion loses efficiency if forced to charge rapidly. Internal temperature differences cause invisible stress that accumulates over time. This stress impairs the uniformity of the electrical current between the cells and affects the structural integrity of the pack. For a vehicle intended for daily use anywhere in the world, this type of instability is not an option. And that's precisely why the Model 2 de Prix de Deux. La 2 becomes a great testing ground for the industry. Everything about it is smaller. The battery pack size, the thermal margin, the available cost to manage it. There's no room for extra luxury or tolerance. Everything has to be precise. Every strategy adopted needs to work not only on paper, but in the daily life of an average user who just wants to charge the car in 10 minutes and drive away without thinking about thermal engineering. Tesla's mission, in this respect, borders on the impossible. What makes this story even more intriguing is that no other competitor has managed to offer a definitive solution for this in entry-level models. Premium cars can handle aluminum ion technology using complex liquid cooling systems, composite materials, and distributed sensors. But the Model 2 wants to deliver something like this for a third of the price and without requiring the user to do anything more than plug it in. The ambition is clear, to democratize a technology that still frightens even veteran engineers. While the Cybertruck drew attention for its futuristic look and almost absurd durability, it also served as an advanced laboratory for ultra-high-performance cooling systems. And it is precisely from there that Tesla drew an ingenious solution for the Model 2 microchannel plates. It may seem like just another technical name, but this detail can be the difference between a safe battery and a thermal nightmare in the form of a popular car. The trick lies in the internal design of these plates, which are literally full of microscopic channels through which the cooling fluid circulates with surgical precision. Instead of using traditional flat plates, microchannels allow the liquid to travel longer and narrower paths increasing the surface area in contact with the heat generated by the cells. In practice, this means the system can extract heat from critical points in the pack much faster. It is estimated that this system absorbs between 30% and 40% more heat than previous methods, and this changes everything when it comes to ultra-fast charging. The maximum temperature, which could previously reach 50 degrees C, C is now controlled to stay around 40 to 2 degrees C even when charging at six degrees. And the most interesting thing about all this is the material chosen. No expensive carbon fibers or fancy space alloys. Tesla opted for extruded aluminum, cheap, lightweight, and easy to mass produce. This clearly shows the type of decision they are making, prioritizing cost without sacrificing efficiency. The use of aluminum allows each panel to cost between you $40 and $50 in large-scale production, which is a fraction of what would be spent on premium EVs. And this, without a doubt, is the kind of move Elon Musk loves to make when he wants to scale a technology for the general public. The placement of the panels is also strategic. They are not simply underneath the battery, but are integrated directly below the cell modules, as close as possible to the area of greatest heat generation. This creates an almost immediate effect when charging begins. The heat does not have time to spread or concentrate. It is drawn directly into the cooling system and carried away before creating problems. The result is a more stable thermal curve, which means less risk, less wear and tear, and a longer lifespan. 
Another detail worth highlighting is its efficiency under different conditions. Even in hot environments, with ambient temperatures nearing 35 Weilerstuzers, the microchannel system manages to keep the battery within an acceptable range. This is essential for users in regions like Texas, the Middle East, or even Brazil, where extreme heat can be a constant enemy. It's no longer enough to charge quickly. It has to charge quickly and safely anywhere on the planet. And microchannels seem to be one of the first real components to make this possible without inflating the final price of the vehicle. If you stop to think about it, it's almost poetic that such a small and discreet part is responsible for enabling something as grand as recharging a full electric car in nine minutes. This shows how, sometimes, genius isn't about reinventing everything, but about reusing what already works and adapting it precisely. And this part, borrowed from a robust vehicle like the Cybertruck, may be the missing link to transform the Model 2 into a reliable machine for everyday use, even when the thermometer is melting. Inside the Model 2's battery pack, Tesla has implemented a material that looks like it came from an advanced science experiment, PCM, or phase change material. At first glance, it looks like solid wax, but it hides a valuable ability. When the temperature starts to rise in the first moments of charging, this material melts in a controlled manner, absorbing large amounts of heat without allowing it to spread rapidly through the cells. It's as if the battery itself has an invisible shield that holds back the initial thermal impact before it causes damage. This passive thermal effect of the PCM is especially useful in the first 60 to 90 seconds of a fast charge, precisely when the microchannel system is just beginning to draw heat from the pack. While the channels are active, the PCM absorbs the initial overload, preventing abrupt temperature spikes. This smooths the battery's thermal graph, creating a safer and more controlled transition between the start and peak of recharging. The gains are visible. In tests, the presence of the PCM reduced the temperature of the core cells by up to 7 degrees Celsius during aggressive charging. The choice of this type of material also follows Tesla's philosophy of combining efficiency with reduced cost. Despite seeming sophisticated, PCM doesn't significantly impact the car's budget. Weighing 2 to 3 kilograms per vehicle and costing between US $5 and US $7 per kilogram, the complete layer adds less than US $20 to the battery pack. In other words, it's a small investment that delivers a significant thermal benefit, exactly the kind of smart move that allows Tesla to deliver top-tier performance in an entry-level car. Another important point about the PCM is its silent operation and lack of energy consumption. Unlike pumps, sensors, or fans, it doesn't need any external command to function. It simply reacts. When it heats up, it melts. When it cools down, it solidifies again. This process can be repeated thousands of times throughout the battery's lifespan without losing effectiveness. This is crucial in a system where space is limited, costs are controlled, and each component needs to justify its place with real and measurable efficiency. The synergy between the PCM and the microchannels becomes even more evident when the car undergoes consecutive charging sessions. Imagine a driver on a trip, stopping at three or four superchargers in the same day. Without the PCM, the still hot cells from the previous charge would be more vulnerable to overheating during the next one. With the PCM, residual heat is absorbed and dissipated more efficiently, allowing each charge to begin in a more stable condition. The result? Less thermal stress and greater durability. Even in colder regions, where heating is a different problem, the PCM plays a significant role. When the car starts charging in freezing temperatures, the heat released at the beginning of the process can be stored by this material and released gradually within the pack, helping to equalize the internal thermal environment. It's a kind of thermal buffer, useful for both heat peaks and cold spells. Versatile, quiet, and inexpensive, a rare combination in the world of automotive engineering. The mini heat pump now integrated into the Tesla Model 2 is one of those parts that no one sees, 
but that makes all the difference behind the scenes. Adapted directly from the system used in the Model Y, this miniature version has been resized to meet the needs of a smaller car without losing its thermal efficiency. It operates almost invisibly, alternating between heating and cooling as the situation demands. On very hot days, it extracts excess thermal energy from the cells during fast charging. In cold climates, it does the opposite, redistributing the accumulated heat to keep the pack warm and efficient. The genius here lies in the balance between performance and cost. Tesla reused its own supply chain and existing components, avoiding creating a new system from scratch. This reduces not only development time, but also the final cost per unit. It is estimated that adding this heat pump costs between U $40 and U $60 per vehicle, a surprisingly low value for such a functional and strategic component. And that, in a car where the budget per part needs to be meticulously controlled, is practically a masterstroke. Another interesting point is how this heat pump works in synergy with the other systems. While the microchannels act directly on the cells and the PCM absorbs the initial peaks, the pump acts as the brain of thermal management. It actively responds to the environment, changing mode based on sensors spread throughout the pack. If the temperature rises beyond the expected level, it kicks in. If it starts to drop too low, it redistributes the existing heat. This flexibility is what allows the system to keep the battery between 35 degrees C and 42 degrees C, even under the most extreme conditions. Beyond its primary function, this mini pump also collaborates with the cabin's climate control system, allowing some of the heat generated in the battery to be reused inside the vehicle. This reduces energy consumption on cold days, extending the overall range. It's not just a technical solution, but an integrated engineering move where nothing is lost and everything is connected. This type of holistic vision is a hallmark of Tesla and is fully evident in this project. Despite its small size, the mini pump's performance is impressive. It not only meets the Model 2's requirements, but also prepares the car for a future where software updates can further improve its efficiency. This means that even years after purchase, the driver can expect improvements in thermal management without replacing a single part, something that, until recently, would have been unimaginable in traditional vehicles. It's also worth remembering that this system doesn't replace the other components. It complements them. The key difference lies precisely in how each part was designed to work together, forming a thermal triad that covers all possible scenarios. This integration is what allows Tesla to use an aluminum ion battery in a mass market car without compromising safety, performance, or durability. And all this at a cost that would even fit in entry-level models from other manufacturers. For the end consumer, the beauty of this system lies in its invisibility. The person who buys the Model 2 in 2026 won't need to understand anything about thermal engineering. They'll just plug the car into the supercharger, have a coffee, and nine minutes later, they'll be ready to go. Even if it's snowing outside or the asphalt is frying eggs. And it's this simplicity, fueled by so much complexity behind the scenes, that transforms the Model 2 into a landmark of the new generation of electric vehicles. When talking about cutting-edge technology, many people immediately imagine a price jump. After all, Microchannels inspired by the Cybertruck, phase-changing materials, and a smart mini heat pump don't exactly sound like cheap solutions. But that's where Tesla makes a bold, almost provocative move, implementing all of this in the Model 2 without breaking the consumer budget. Instead of avoiding cost, the company embraces complexity and packages it efficiently, with a total estimated cost between U100 dollars 